What's going on, YouTube? Um, got another, got another video. Ain't really got too much to do with cars though today. Today, doing some work in the crib. Um, yes, I know y'all see in the PJs. Polo PJs got to be fly too, right? But in any case, I'm gonna show y'all how my how I'm gonna change up the way I want my TV on my wall. Before I just used to have my TV mounted up there. But now I'm actually gonna have, it used to have just a plug at the bottom. Now I'm gonna install a new plug at the top, lower my mount some, and move my TV over a bit, just a little bit to the left. I got a new TV mount that's full motion mount, which is better for the way my living room is set up. And I'm gonna mount the sound bar up underneath the TV, and I'm gonna mount a floating shelf underneath the TV also. So coming down from my TV, you won't see no wires anymore. All the wires gonna be going up. I'm just gonna have my Blu-ray player mounted up here, and I'm gonna have, of course, my Xbox three, my Xbox uh, One mounted up here. So make sure y'all subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, share my videos. This is a how-to video for people who are interested in doing this themselves. Uh, instead of paying somebody to come out and do it, the electrical side part, it's just always be safe, kill a breaker for it. I have a little tester for it to be able to test if I'm getting power there still to that electrical socket or not. Um, because I am adding, I mean, I'm tapping into one electrical socket to add an electrical socket up top. So it's going to be also sending, receiving power at the bottom and sending it up to the top. It may be sending power somewhere else. I'm not sure yet. I haven't taken it apart yet. I am just going to kind of speed through the process. I'm not gonna do everything necessarily super step by step, but I will break down what I did once it's all complete and break down for you how I did it, what I checked, and the important parts. Um, yes, I will go ahead and break down and cover, but the full viewing of the entire install, um, I may not do, I may just be through just to save a little time because my TV's coming today. I supposed to have been had this done a week ago. I haven't had it done. My other TV, it's a long story. Got a new TV. And I thought I would share with y'all how I do things, how I mount this TV and little things that I do around the crib. Um, I'm gonna share that with you guys also. So this is just a how-to video coming from your boy, Big Boy Les. And make sure you hit the subscribe button. Peace. Now, like I was saying before, you can see this just the one plug down there. There is no plug up here. So I'm gonna mount another plug somewhere up in this area. Vertical to the plug that's down there. So I'm gonna cut a hole in the wall and I'm gonna mount another plug there. I'm gonna take this old mount off. And like I said before, I have a new mount for an extra large full motion TV wall mount. I had an 86 inch TV on the wall. I'm going back with the 75 inch because the 86 pretty much was very, very big for this wall. I would have had to, it fit, but it was very big. So I think a 75 inch will fit this wall much better. This is the box that I'm going to use. Now these boxes are some good boxes to use because um, you can mount them into the wall. You turn one of the screws and that little flap comes up. You turn the screw and that flap right there comes up and that's what locks it in place up against the drywall. These boxes are very cheap. Got them from Amazon. Got like $12 for, you know, a three pack, which isn't bad. Here's my extra wire that I'm going to use. This is um, 1220 wire. A little bit thicker just for, for safety because I am going to, um, I could have got 1020 or a little bit thinner, but I got 1220 wire just for, just for a little bit thicker for safety and, you know, even though I'm not running too many amps to it. Here's a, the new plug that I'm going to use. This is actually a GFCI plug I put in the bathroom. The one in my bathroom was new and I'm going to install that as the plug, which is that right there. This is going to go up there now. What else I got? I got a leveler. Want to make sure everything is level. I got this surge protector. And what I'm gonna do with this surge protector 
since that's only a two-way plug and I'm gonna have quite a few things plugged into it, all I'm gonna have on this socket is my surge protector. Most surge protectors have it to where you can, um, they got uh, slots in the back of them to where you can mount your surge protector also. So I'm gonna mount my surge protector to the wall behind the TV. Um, it may not be perfectly centered. It, it may be, I may mount it like this a little bit. So that way, um, of course you want the TV to cover the surge protector. It sits out a little bit, but my TV can still go all the way flush back and just be sticking out just about, just about this amount. This box is bulky, that's why it looks so big, but it'll be really flush to the wall. So only thing gonna be plugged into my power outlet that'll be right here is the surge protector. And everything else is gonna be plugged into here. Plus it's a surge protector, it protects your equipment, of course, from any power surges, so I won't have to worry about any mishaps with that. Cause like I said before, I am going to be having my Xbox, my sound bar, my fire stick, my Blu-ray player, and my TV. So that's five things I'm gonna to have to have plugged into that socket. So I'm on, why not use a surge protector, plug everything into the surge protector and just have a surge protector plugged into the wall, right? I'm gonna do it like that. The other thing I got is um, a universal sound bar mounting bracket. As you can see, it's universal, so I can use it to mount any sound bar to my TV. Like I said before, I will be mounting my sound bar to my TV, which you can see, this is a sound bar, which is very high quality. If you want really good sound, get a sound bar with no less than 300 watts. I think this is rated just above 300 watts and it sounds amazing. And there's the subwoofer for it. Of course, this stuff is Bluetooth. So all I gotta do is plug it into the wall for power and it works. It can Bluetooth my TV. It can, I mean, you still use an optical cable, which is what I like to use when it comes to the TV, which looks like this. Sorry about that, my video got cut because uh, somebody called me. But like I was saying, I use this, this style optical cable. This is what we going to my soundbar to the TV, just for more optimal performance. I should have two HDMI's going to it, one for the Blu-ray player and one for my Xbox. And then I will just have a uh, fire stick hooked up to it. So I will be showing y'all how it looks and what I start on it in a minute. Now this is just a quick showing. You can see I got the knife stuck in the wall. Um, I drew my line on this side at first, and I realized that's right where the stud is at. I got my bolts lined up with the stud. As I started hitting this one, I was hitting stud. So then I just drew my box directly on the left side of this. Now I'm gonna use just a regular old house knife, and I'm gonna cut out the size of my box, which all I did was set my box up here and drew a line around it from the outside of it. Nothing special, right? Now, before I started cutting into it, I have a stud finder, but the stud finder also has a setting for electrical. See that? So I just hold the side button, let the meter go, and I went all around the box just to make sure, I went all around the box just to make sure that I do not cut into a wire line. Now I did this while I was hot, so that I could be able to read it. And as you see, further down I go, see it move. See, power is over here on this side. So it's far away from where I'm trying to work. I move it away and the power goes away. Very handy tool to have. It reads for steel, it reads for wood. This is what I use to do my wall mounts and it also reads for electrical. So I am completely away from anything electrical. Make sure that um, that you check before you start cutting into your wall where you're gonna mount it, your, your power supply box feed that you do not have anything electrical in it. Just a friendly tip on another example of being safe. Now I'm gonna cut the hole before I power down the circuit because I wanted to know exactly where my power, will uh, make sure I'm not cutting into any power wire. Just wanted to make another quick 
uh, brake. Of course, this one is for safety. This tool right here, this little pin, uh, measure amps. Um, so if you have any electrical power going to anything, uh, what it'll do is you press this button and it will light up. Now I just killed the power to my circuit by hitting the breaker. After I pull this plug out, you can see I'm not getting any lights nowhere around it, right? That's kind of how this thing works. I'll probably replace that also because it's old. Now let me show you on a live circuit. Which I'm just gonna go right here to this one. I hit the button. Let me know. I have a live circuit here. So nice little tool to have. It only costs maybe 10 bucks, but it's a good electrical circuit tester so that, or a voltmeter, but this is a little bit quicker. I hit the breaker so that I can go ahead and pull it out and continue my install in a minute. Now I finally got past the hardest part, my goodness. I finally got the line, be able to feed through the one hole. And as you can see, come out of the other hole. This was not easy. It wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. It's my first time doing this, guys, so I'm not saying that I'm a professional by any means, but I knew I could do it, and I believe in myself. That right there, I guarantee it took me every bit of about 35 minutes to 45 minutes to do. No lie, I'm not sure told nothing. That was difficult. Only reason it was difficult you know, I know it's some padding inside the wall, but it's padding. You know, it seemed like you be able to push through it. But I forgot somewhere through there is also a 2x4. So we got to get past the 2x4. Before, I think it was just hitting the 2x4 and curling up because I couldn't feed it through through anything. And then some parts, I think it was just bundling up with the, with the padding inside the wall. And I was having a problem with that. So... Me being me, I got creative. Yep, what that look like? That is a broom handle. One of them little metal broom handles. I took that and I bent it maybe every uh, six inches, five to six inches, I bent it so that it can curve through the wall. I mean, I can't use it for a broom handle anymore, but it's the only thing I had available that was strong enough to be able to push through all of the, the foam and the insulation in the wall. And when I did that, I was able to push this down through. I just kept beating it down. Boom, 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 beating it through. It went all the way through. I stuck my hand up through the bottom hole and I felt the bottom of my broom handle. Once I felt the bottom of it, I pulled it all the way out. I was able to feed the wire through and it came right out the bottom, no problem. So good tip to, for something to use. I will guarantee if your wall is anything like mine and you're going the distance that I'm going, you're going to need something to be able to, strong enough to be able to push through all the insulation and everything else that's inside of that wall. Cause that was my problem. My wire, wire is thick, but it will bend. Now, if your wall drywall is straight through, you can use a magnet. Cause as we all know, that wire is metal. You can use a big head magnet, kind of stick it to the magnet and be able to pull it straight through once you get the little magnet through. Uh, we use a telescopic magnet, just like I use an automotive, and that would have worked also, but I wanted to get it as vertical as possible to the bottom box, which is only a slight offset. As you can see, the bottom box is there. This box is up there just slightly offset because the two by four is right on, along that wall to be perfectly, um, <clears throat> perfectly vertical to it, <clears throat> excuse me. So I just had to go slightly. So, but I used the two by four wall as a point to go straight down. So I bent that towards the wall and kept pushing down. So I pierced me a hole through any insulation or whatever that's in that wall. And the outcome was I got wire out the back. Now that is the hardest part of this project, by all means the hardest. Like I said, it took me 45 minutes to figure it out, but once I figured out to use my broom handles, get something to pierce through it, I was done in five minutes. So that's a good tech tip. 
if you have something like that laying around. If not, having something that, that's flexible enough to bend but still be strong. And that's what these broom handles are because they still, they're not going to just collapse. It, I use it and just pierce, pierce straight through it. Now the hard part is over. I can wire my bottom box up, wire my top box up, cut strip wires, wire it all up, put it all together, switch the power on, make sure I get power to both. And this part of the project is done. And that was the hardest part. So just a quick stop to show you what I had to go through and what you may have to go through. All right, here's an update. As you can see, I have the bottom one in. Uh, I went to Lowe's because I wanted to switch the plug. Ain't no sense of taking the plug out and using the same old style plug. It's pretty much in there. I just got to put the cover on for it. This one comes with light, which is cool. The light is auto as well. So if it gets dark, it senses it's dark and the light will automatically switch on and I can always manually turn it on and turn it off. So I liked it that, so I went on and got that kind for the bottom because ain't no sense of leaving the old one in. The top is completely finished. Just a quick overview, this is the bottom one. As you can see it's old, I mean, hell, it's probably been on there for well over 15, 20 years. Here's the top. This is how I was gonna have it set up. As you can see, I have power because the surge protector is on. So everything is wired up, nice, neat, and powered. I already had this cover and this one um, socket because I took this out of my bathroom when I installed a GCFI in my bathroom. And I wanted, so I said, I'm gonna put this one up top. I only wanted one plug in because I'm gonna plug everything up to the surge protector, which I have is nice, nice, tight, and snapped in place. It got holes in it so it can push back and lock in push in and lock in place. So it's uh, very durable and dependable and I like that it's a surge protector. Um, I could get fancy with it and get some wires holders for the wall to uh, hold the wires, but I'm gonna try to maybe, um, I may get one or two, just some little cable holders, put one here, one there, and one there. So I may need three of them since I have to go back anyway because I do not have a new cover for that style. So I gotta get another cover for that. Um, but this is pretty much the setup. And see the TV is gonna cover all of that. That's the bottom, that's the top. The TV is gonna cover all of that. You will see no holes in the wall. You may see the very bottom of the plug, maybe, but chances is the TV is gonna cover everything. You will not see any, any wires going coming down from the TV which was my goal, which is why I wanted to step my game up and install it like this. I do wall mount TVs myself as a side hustle. You can see the top and bottom. Just a quick stop, because I do have to go to Lowe's and get the bottom cover for that. And actually I need uh, some more stuff from Lowe's that I'm going to get that I wasn't, I, that I didn't realize I didn't have, but I am going to go ahead and install the new uh, take that back off. That's for the old wall mount. Install the new back for the new wall mount because it is a full motion tilt wall mount. And I'm going to lower it some and move it over to the left some. But the board is going to stay in place. The board is drilled into the studs. This is how I mount all of my wall mount TVs that have any weight. That way you can center it. You can, people do mount to the studs, but sometimes the stud is not in the center of your wall. So you have to mount the TV wherever the stud is. I'm mounting this board to the stud and having it wide enough, I can mount the mount to the board any location and it stays on, it doesn't go anywhere. Put plenty of screws in. But this is pretty much the setup at this point. When I'm finished with more, I will give you an update. All right, YouTube, it's time for me to go to work, but this is the end result. As you can see, I added the light up plug down there. I gotta figure out how to set it so it only lights up when there's no power and it switches off in the uh, in the dark. I mean, it switches off in the daytime, only illuminates during night. I like how it shines downward on the ground. Only thing to be plugged into it is my Blu-ray speaker 
I mean, my subwoofer for my surround sound. As you can see, no wires. No wires. This is the floating shelf. Um, got it from Amazon. Great, great deal, great price. As you can see, no wires come down. Both uh, the Xbox and the DVD, the Blu-ray player is all that's going to be up there. Um, I mounted my sound bar to the bottom of the TV. So that way when I pull the TV out, I can turn it left and right and the sound follows. This is the install. Um, turned out great, lots of work, but it turned out great. Now you saw I initially just had that plug. I'm gonna show you the back real quick and that will end the video. Just on what I did. But it's kind of hard to see because it's dark. Let me grab my flashlight. To give it a quick glimpse. I'm gonna show you the back view real quick. Use this flashlight because it's dark back here. It's nighttime. You can see the plug. This is a plug that I installed earlier, as you saw in the video. I zip tied wires and used strapping for all the wires for the HDMI ports. As you can see, I got the full motion, heavy duty, um, mount all this stuff from Amazon. I got the universal bracket for the sound bar and I got the bracket that goes with the sound bar and all the wires are zip tied to the sound bar bracket. So you do not see them from the front of the TV. I got these two coming up the wall, which is my Xbox power cable and my Blu-ray player power cable pushed into the wall because those items don't move when I pull the TV out. So I can bolt them to the wall so they can stay in place. As you can see, only thing I have plugged in is the surge protector. And I have all of my cords plugged into the surge protector, which is mounted directly up underneath the bracket. That's pretty much it for the install. The wires are also tucked right there into the floating mount. That is a view from behind. This is the view from the front. Any questions, comments, let me know. Enjoy the video. Don't forget to get the comment, hit the sub subscribe button, and give it a thumbs up. Thank you.